contest that we may have. Had a good time, Wes and I. So I want you guys to know this. Think about this now. It was a great margin. I take away the, the football team because they played very well. I think Wes and I had a little bit to do with the uh, margin of victory. Um, it is great to uh, see everyone. Um, I, I've seen most of you guys running around for football and you know throughout the summer. And uh, honestly, I miss some of you guys. I haven't had a chance to get a few questions from some of you guys, so I miss you. Uh, been a, a really busy off season, and what I mean by that is anytime that you bring in eight new guys and we got a couple of different staff members, and I think our um, staff has done a tremendous job of hitting the transfer portal, which we knew we had to do, and we were going to lose so many important pieces that we had. Um, but I like our team. Um, we're new. Um, the advantage of this team is that they are new, and so most, most of these guys are coming in as sponges and um, are excited um, from moving at the last stop to having the opportunity to play here and our style of play. A lot of them are uh, very grateful to be in the ACC. Uh, the disadvantage is that we got new guys and we don't have the um, you know foreign trip to take this year as we did last year to be able to get some of these guys up to speed. And so we've done a little bit more competition stuff in practice, a little bit more five on five trying to get those guys up to speed a little bit in our four hours that we've had a week. And um, now on Monday, we get an opportunity to, to start full practice. So um, I'll take questions at this time. Kevin, we saw MJ's, uh, MJ Rice's statement that he made earlier this week. What does it mean to, to know that you'll have him back with the team soon? And do you have an expected timeline of when that should happen? Yeah, you know, um, we do not have a time. Um, and, and if you go back to his statement, it was, you know, he's all for personal reasons, and it's going to be kind of on MJ when he decides to come back. What kind of bonding experiences can you all have without the trip, obviously? What are ways you can bond together? Yeah, you know, we're, we're going to, uh, later on in the next two or three weeks, we're going to take a trip. Um, we typically go to Wilmington and uh, practice and get away a little bit. Uh, we're trying to have as many, um, you know, we've done paintball. We're trying to go out. We use the tailgates as a great example for our guys to get together and have a good time. So the more we can grow off the court, the better we're going to be on the court. But we take every opportunity that we can uh, just for these guys to be able to hang out and laugh with each other. We've completely, I don't know if you guys had a chance to come through the lounge, um, we've completely redone the lounge so we can get back to hanging out in the lounge. Uh, we put a couple uh, PlayStations in there where they can play and have fun a little bit. And so we, it's important that we just grow together. Major Wes, it didn't look like he wanted to give you that microphone the other day. Did I get read that right? Well, first of all, we, we, when, we, when we said there was one mic, I looked at him and said, all right, Wes, here's your deal. You got a chance now. You want to steal the show. You do it. I'm gonna, I'll just follow your lead. We get into the home tunnel, and he's like, man, I'm going to only talk for 30 seconds, and I'm going to hand you the mic. Like, come on, Wes, that ain't like you to pass up the show. But we, we had a great time. Um, you know, we talked about it a couple of days leading into it. It was exciting. You know, we, we decided to go with the football jerseys. And I'm an old quarterback, and Wes says that he's an old receiver. And so we talked about, hey, us throwing a pass. And I was like, Wes, that will never happen because I'm going to throw the pass. It's not going to be very good because I ain't thrown a pass in 20 years, and there's no way you're catching the pass. So pretty good. Are you more used to here? Kind of hiding down the cameras in the back, Kevin. Are you more used to kind of the transfer portal now and what that takes? And obviously, you had a lot of success last year with it. So, kind of, what was it like going through it another time? And what do you expect to come out of it? Yeah, I'm more used to college basketball. Um, I think I said last year that the I don't know that there will be many guys who start as a freshman at that university and end up you know staying there to graduation. Um, you know, last year we had four. Um, this year we have seven, and obviously you had one more with Dennis Parker as a freshman. But I don't know if I'm going to ever get used to it, but it's where we are today, and we, you know, we have to get up to speed really quick. Do you think, I mean, last year with Jarkel and DJ, for example, like just home runs, I mean, is that fair? Should we expect that kind of results again? I mean, what's fair? Well, I'm going to tell you what. You give me Jarkel Jordan and DJ Burns every year, they are home runs. Um, you know, we, you know, I looked at it last year. It's funny because people will rank the top transfers, and I don't think any either one of those guys were in the top 50. But for us, they, they became McDonald's All-Americans. I mean, they were really good. Uh, you talk about Jarkel Joyner, he had career highs in every category, uh, transferring <coughs> Ole Miss 
coming here. Uh, had a great year for us. And then, you know, uh, unfortunate thing with Dushan before she getting hurt, uh, DJ obviously got a chance to go into the start lineup. We played him about 30 minutes a game after that. And, man, the legend of DJ Burns was born. And, I mean, he is, um, he may be, he, he's going to be mayor of this city one day. <laughs> uh, he is. He is what he is. And so those two guys were really good. Um, it's unfair for me to say whether I have a DJ Burns and a Jarkel Joyner uh, because we didn't know that at the beginning when we got those guys. But hopefully two or three guys will turn out to be just as good as those guys are. How do you see the point guard and power forward spots? Say that again. How do you see the point guard and power forward spots? Yeah, I think it's a lot of Or small ball four. Yeah, I think it's a lot of competition. I think, you know, you, you got Michael O'Connor who has um, played – a lot of basketball at Power Five that can, you know, obviously play the point. Uh, DJ Horn, who is in the same situation, but he's been more of a combo guard his whole life. And you got two guys who, you know, completely had to play against Jaquel Joyner and Tequavion Smith um, and Breon Pass and uh, LJ Thomas. And so we got a lot of options. I don't know who we will go with ultimately at the end. And then Power Forward, um, we got a lot of options too. We could play big. I mean, we could go back to the fact when, you know, we had, you know, uh, DJ Funderburg and Manny Bates playing because I love what Mohammed is bringing. I love what Ben brings. And then you got Dennis, and then you got, you'll have an opportunity to play MJ at some of those positions also. What has DJ Horn brought to this team both on and off the court? You know, DJ, it's, it's always great to get a, a young man to come back home. And he's here, and he's been positive, and he's been great. He's an older uh, it's a great older guy to have in your locker room, uh, let alone his ability to score the basketball. He will put you a little bit in the mindset of to Young and John Carroll because he's a really offensive-minded player. What are your thoughts on ACC expansion? Maybe would you like to see a situation where football doesn't dictate the alignment of basketball, baseball, or and so on? Yeah, it's been a lot of man, it's been a lot of conversation. A lot of you guys have conversations about that. Here's what I'll say from where I sit as a basketball coach. I trust in um, you know um, Chancellor Woodson and Boo Corgan to make the decisions that are best for NC State and also best for the ACC. I, I don't get a chance to sit in those meetings. You know, I'm the basketball coach. I gotta I gotta put the best product on the floor for NC State and whoever we play, we play. I mean, that's just the way I look at it. There's been talks, kind of building off of what Rob said, there's been talks about the fact that sports like basketball and, and Olympic sports as well could look to go more regional and not allow football to kind of dictate the schedule. How do you feel about that? I don't know. Like, I don't, you know, it, it, it's, it, for us, it's completely a different ball game. And so I don't get the opportunity to see the other sports and how they travel and how many times they play. And so it would be completely unfair for me to answer those type of questions because I don't. Like, I'm really literally, when you want to talk about low man in this situation, I'm a low man in this situation because I don't have the opportunity to have those conversations. It could. Go back to those options at point guard and power forward. Uh, not necessarily those positions, but in the team overall. How? What does it say about the depth to have so many guys that could be contributing at some point? Yeah, I think I think we have possibly ten guys that we can put in the game. Um, you know, I, I think you know I, I won't make hockey substitutions where we go five and five. But I do think that you know for the first time in a long time that we have you know two point guards, two shooting guards, two small forwards, two power forwards, um, two centers, and and then obviously. Um, We've got a lot of interchangeable parts that can play different positions. Maybe in time we'll look at this as an anomaly, but when you see what Deion's done in Colorado and then what Coach Tang did at Kansas State and a, a, a no blue blood Final Four, you know, does that kind of play with your mind a little bit about how things have changed? No, I, I think they, those guys have done a tremendous job in their first year, and I think that's important. Um, you want to come in and you want to build your first year. Uh, go back to my first year, had a great year. You just got to keep building and you got to keep on working. But I think when you, when you bring up those two guys, I think they've done a tremendous job. they brought excitement um, to their job, to their fan bases, and I think that's what's important. You, you talked about uh, how well how well your first year went, and then, of course, like we had uh, kind of a dip because of just whatever situation. I mean, last year, really good year, but this roster with the depth you talked about, is that the best case scenario for this team to build off of such a great season? 
Yeah, we've had some great things happen here. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people say, golly, you know, you look at this and all that stuff. You know, it's hard at any level to win uh, 20 games four years. And it's really four out of five because one of them was a completely washed where we didn't play a lot of games. Um, I just said when we, last year we got back on track from where we were at the first three years. And obviously, um, you know, I, I can sit up here and I can point to COVID. I can say injuries and all that other stuff. None of that matters. The matters is that we came off of, we got back on track. We just won 23 games. We just went to the NCAA. And we want to continue to build on that. What kind of buzz did you feel when Dennis arrived in June? Dennis Parker. Oh, okay. What's, what's what kind of buzz? Oh, uh, what kind of buzz? Yeah, like how did you, I mean, how fast did he acclimate? Oh, man, he is, um, you, you guys will get a chance to watch us um, hopefully soon if Craig will allow you to practice. And it's not me, Craig's the one. <laughs> but he is, what makes Dennis Parker really, really um, unique is that he plays hard. And you know, we had a workout this morning and um, you know, a couple guys I didn't think played hard, which is uncharacteristic of a couple guys. And one thing I've always said is the hardest, hardest playing team typically gives us the best chance to win. And when you look at Dennis, uh, he won't, you won't, he won't put you in the mindset of a freshman. He believes he runs the floor. He's athletic. Uh, he can play multiple positions. He can guard multiple positions. So I'm really excited about him as a freshman. And I've actually even, when I talk now, I say we have eight newcomers, and I consider him part of a transfer, even though he's a freshman. I was going to ask you, I mean, what position do you feel like he fits best right now, or is it just still that person still is trying to figure out where he can go? Yeah, I think he's, I think he's going to play some small forward for us. And then also when we go, if we were to go small ball, I think he can play that torn uh, Dorn role, mm -hmm. uh, be able to play some forward for us. Did you kind of look at Cam Woods as maybe just too good to pass up, even if he does have to sit out a year? No, you know, we, we had conversations. Um, Cam's had a very unfortunate situation. Um, when you think about Cam Woods, um, you know, I want to say he went to uh, Troy. Um, he decided to um, leave Troy and go to junior college. Not knowing he goes to junior college, you know, had some family situations, and then he transfers to A&T. Well, he doesn't think or he doesn't know that that may be his one-time transfer because he left Troy as a freshman. He goes to I mean, he goes to junior college, and then he enters back into college. He's thinking possibly when I transfer the next time, that's my first transfer. Um, but we had those conversations up front. Uh, we talked about that. You know, we talked about here are the opportunities. Um, you know, we would have to file a waiver for you to be eligible under the current situation. Um, but if the waiver doesn't go through, then you have to, if you're going to come to NC State, you have to accept the fact that you're going to have to sit out a year like it used to be. And he was completely fine with that. And I tried to set the expectation where it was and make sure that we both understood this is what it could be. And, you know, we, we're going to, we should be filing a waiver for him soon. And um, we'll live with whatever the results are. With so many new faces, Coach, you have a, a, a kind of a leader that can pull it all together for you guys? Yeah, I'm looking for that. Um, you know, DJ Burns is he's really a, he's a great leader when he's catching that ball and he's scoring. Uh, on the other hand, when we put him in ball screens, he's not such a great leader. And so we're trying to figure out, you know, who can step up and be that voice. Um, you know, I, I don't know where it's going to come from right now. It's the coaches, and we're the loudest guys in practice. That will change come Monday because now someone else has to step in and make the calls and make the defensive calls and everything else. But I don't have that. I didn't know that until, um, you know, probably two months in when John Kell Joyner became one of the best leaders that I probably coached in my life. And, you know, he was just, you know, I didn't know that. I just didn't know it. And he kind of took over. He took over and, you know, little did I know he started doing it in the locker room, but I didn't see it on the floor. And then all of a sudden he elevated. So my old coach always says the cream will rise to the top. So someone will become a leader. So it's not a concern there, right? There. Not a concern. Are you able to share any details about Trey Parker's decision to go back <laughs> to over summer week? I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. I got to watch what I say. I don't know if I can comment on Trey Parker. I, well, I wasn't sure. Yeah. He signed. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to stay out of it. I don't have a problem sharing. Sure. But I don't think I can comment on it from a compliance standpoint because he didn't show up day one of uh, school. Yeah.
with, with the Copans will get me in trouble for saying that part of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the player that you said, I don't. All right. I want to ask a question about Cam going back to him. Um, I saw him a few times at ANT last year, and it seemed like um, he played his best against the, the ranked schools, the teams that were some of the best uh, competition that they went against. Uh, if he does get a chance to play this year, what can he bring uh, to the floor for NC State with him? Just yeah, he, he's good. You don't, I mean, you don't average 17 points in Division One, no matter what level, unless you really score the basketball. Um, he's gotten a lot stronger. Um, he's shooting the ball a little bit more consistent at this level. Um, I think he would be good. He would be a great addition to our um, our roster. And once again, I'll go back and say it. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be eligible or not, but I do think if he is, I think he can help us. I don't know if you've ever had three wings who are all capable of getting double digits. Is this like a new toy with DJ Casey and, and Jaden? Yeah, I mean, good, good, I mean, good players. I mean, Casey Warsell, you know, I haven't said enough about him this summer. Man, what a great year that he had for us. And, uh, you know, as, as I talk about Jacquel Joyner and the impact that he had coming in, Casey had an impact for the jump that he made. And, He's played well. Jay Taylor's going to be really good. I mean, we got some talented guys that can score the basketball. You know, the biggest thing, as I told you before, is learning how to play, you know, together. Uh, we lost two dynamic scores. Uh, I don't know if I'll have in a, in a long time, I don't know if I'll coach two guys that's in the backcourt that was as good as those guys at the same time. I mean, we're talking about 34 points a game. And, you know, sometimes when I go back and watch tape, which I do all the time, even up recently as two days ago, man, I almost want to cry. I mean, those guys were really good. I mean, to Quagmire Smith, um, I can't say enough about him. Grateful that he came here. Grateful that people doubted him at, you know, 150 pounds when he decided to commit here. And, you know, look at the uh, impact that he had in two years. And I'll go back and say John Kel John was tremendous. Those two guys really work well together because not because of Tequavion Smith, but more because of Jaquel Joyner, who was more of an older brother and kind of took him under his wing and was okay with a young kid taking a lot of shots, even though he was transferring in here. You mentioned energy at first glance, watching Muhammad son last year. You know the the quick feet, kind of spazzy. You know how do you see him as a, a defensive force, and you know what does he have to kind of get more polished at? He's been, uh, he's been our most um, complete player from the summer until now. I mean, he's been really good, like talented, rebounds the basketball, um, can step out and shoot and handles the ball on the break. He thinks he's a point guard. I know he's not, but he thinks he is. Um, but he's, he's been really good. Like, I'm, I've been impressed with him. His work ethic has um, completely changed when he got here. You know, he wasn't into it as much. But now he's found some success through practice. And he's kind of taken off to another level. And so, you know, he'll play some four and five fours. Uh, he won't play small forward like he may think, but he's going to be, he'll help us out a lot. Did it help at all in the, the say, the recruiting pitch between Middlebrooks and Diara that, you know, DJ's going to play X amount of minutes? Um, you, you have talked often about how many of those minutes might be, but he also might get into foul trouble. You know, was it easy to say, hey, you know, you can come here and do what Dusan did that, that first month and a half and play those, you know, what, 15 to 25 minutes at times? No, I would never tell a guy who um, is not committed here yet that DJ is not going to play a lot and he's going to be in foul trouble in case he went somewhere else. So I, we just we talked about, you know, there's an opportunity to play. We don't have a, a starting um, you know, power forward. There's opportunities to play. There's opportunities to play minutes at the five. There's opportunities to play minutes at the four. But, you know, I like Ben just when he wanted a different role. He wanted the opportunity. He was stuck behind a really good basketball player in P.J. Hall, and he wanted the opportunity to play some power forward, and um, that's why he's here. With DJ, and, he, and he rebounded well against us, too. That helped too. <laughs> With DJ, I mean, obviously this is, has been an ongoing conversation, but is there anything that you've been able to do over the last few months or can do over the next few months to just try to find ways that he can stay on the floor more, you know, keep himself on the floor more? Yeah, he, you know, Luke, it's, uh, man, he is, I, I may have, I know this is something you guys can pray to, I may have the best back to the basket post guy. And it's so hard, man. He, man, he is tough. He's lefty. He can score it in different ways. Um, you don't get many assists off of him because he'll catch it and dribble four or five times. 
to me to score the basketball. But we've talked about, you know, he because he's got so much, so good, his hands are so good that he reaches a lot. Even on ball screens, he's always thinking he can pick somebody. And what we've done is, hey, man, you can't do that. you got to wall off. you got to do a good job. You can't reach. you got to stay in the game. You have to do your work early on the defensive end. Get in position to do your work early. And a lot of his really never – a lot of his fouls don't come off the guy he's guarding. It's our guards getting blown by, and he's reaching or not walling up or jumping when he's in a restricted area. So part of that is we've talked about our guards. you got to really guard the basketball. And then DJ, when they do come in, you can't give up stupid fouls. Yeah. Did you ever have any conversations with, with Paul Brazzo or Brian Kersey about the way that DJ was officiated, especially in terms of the charge calls? Yeah, 150 times. <laughs> I mean, I think he gets clobbered. You guys know it. I mean, he – but, you know, he plays through it. You know, one, the, the biggest conversation that we've had is – he catches the ball almost close to the three-point line. You guys are written about it, so don't act like it's a surprise. And um, you shouldn't be able to have a closed elbow while the guy's there. Technically, he's a perimeter player at that time. Once he gets close to the block is when you can use your elbow. And so we've talked about that, and, and he's won. And he got a little butter at the end. When guys were doing this out at the three-point line, and, which is not allowed because he's no different than any guard, when you catch the ball out that far. And so we talked about that part of it. And I, I think Paul Paul uh, understood. Uh, I didn't need Paul to understand as much. I need Kersey to understand. So he can make sure that the other referees really understood what we were talking about. What kind of separation have you seen with the new guys as far as workouts and what you've seen from them throughout the offseason? You mean playing wise? Yeah, yeah, as far yeah. as who's standing out, what you've seen from them. Yeah, I think everybody's had different days. And I, I, that's why I think this team, um, we have more depth because there is nobody that's like, you know, I, th I think Mo had a week where he kind of separated himself from the pack and then obviously he came back down. But I think the good thing about this, this team is that, you know, one day DJ Horn can have one. We've had great competition and typically what's happening is I've been going, um, you know, four days for one hour and I've kind of kept the same teams and they, what I like about them is when one team loses, they talk trash to each other. And then also we keep the same teams and they come in and they perform and they play. Uh, I think the competition which make this team, which will make this team really special is because they can push each other and there are no clear guys above another. In, in honor of Joe, how is the schedule? Is it net worthy? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, if you think about our schedule, the tough thing about it is like, and this is a rarity that doesn't happen. You know, we had four or five quad fours in our league. And I think that was tough. You know, we just, we had some traditional power programs in our league that this just didn't have great years last year. And then when you get caught playing those folks at home versus on the road, it makes it tough. I like our non-conference schedule. I like the teams that we got. But I, I do think our, our league will be a lot better. And I think it, takes away some of those quad fours that we may have had. What do you think the ceiling is for this team this year? I was going to, I was going to say something funny, but I won't say that. <laughs> Not to you. Cause, but uh, I think the team has a chance to be really, really exciting to watch. Um, I, think we, I think what you'll see is a, a lot of versatility. Uh, we will, I think we led the ACC in fast break points at almost 15 a game, if I'm not mistaken. I want to play faster if I can. I don't know that we can get more than 15 points a game. Uh, the one thing about the, the team that we had last year, as fast as we played, we really took care of the basketball. I think this group has a chance to be um, that type of group. Uh, we could be better defensively, which I, I hope is the case, um, you know, because we have a lot of people that can fly around and guard multiple positions. When you're trying to get guys to play together, personalities can uh, kind of enter into it. From what you've seen from the personalities and the new faces that you have, do you like what you've seen? Yes, yeah, sponges. I think everybody's been sponges. You, you guys know me. Let's, and sometimes you love me, sometimes you hate me for it. We play hard. We might not do everything right, but when we put a product on the floor, they're going to play hard. And I think what, what this group is, the personalities, I've completely checked the egos and here, here's what you have to do. You have to compete to play for me. Uh, one of the things I told them um, 
you know, this morning was, it's not even the guy who makes the most shots who I love. It's the guy who competes every possession and plays all the time. And you, you, you've seen guys over the past years who wasn't great scorers. Uh, Greg Gant did a great job playing for us, didn't score a lot of baskets, but he played a meaningful role for us. And, and I, see, I think that's the biggest thing with these guys is there is no egos. Uh, most of our guys out of the seven transfers are looking for another opportunity to prove that they were, you know, should have gotten more playing time at their last place. You know, I once asked DJ, do you see yourself as a point guard? He what said, did he say? I want to know that. He said, I score. He scores. Okay. He scores. He doesn't see himself as a point guard, but what do you think how do you a, how do you kind of see him? Two guard. I, <laughs> I, I see him as a I see him as a passer. Now his assist to turnover ratio is not great, <laughs> but but think about this now. He makes every big pass and big play that you need to. Um, we'll we'll run the offense through him at times where he can become a passer and all that other stuff. I do think he scores. He's different. You know, he's a lefty, he's got great soft touch, um, his footwork is really good, uh, but we will run some things where he'll be able to make some plays out of the post by passing the ball. And he's going to get all type of, um, you know, double teams and everything else because he has all year long. How do you see LJ Thomas, who at this time last year hadn't played in a year? I imagine he's made huge strides just by being active for a full season. Yeah, I need, I need LJ Thomas and Breon Pass to um, – Learn from Dequavion Smith and more so Jaco Joyner. Like he made it rough for those guys uh, in practice. Like it was, it was hard to get the ball on the floor. He would they couldn't run an offense. And so what I'm trying to get them to do is, hey, this is where you learn. You learn from an upperclassman. I know we're in the world of transfers, but you learn from an upperclassman how to play, how to compete, how to be a, um, a good ACC player. And I want them guys to just. I want them to think back to the days when they couldn't run an offense and I had to take them, take Jaquel Jonah off of them because we couldn't even practice. And so I'm trying to get those guys to kind of take on that role. Do you have someone you would trust right now as your as a top on ball defender, disruptor? Yeah, I, I like Jane Taylor. Um, last year I, I said that Casey Morsell would be um, on the all defensive team and Casey didn't listen to me enough. He's, uh, he's a really good defensive player, but I, I would say Jaden uh, or Casey can play that role more than anything, more so uh, Jaden than, than Casey. How about the enthusiasm this offseason, juxtaposed to last year, you guys are coming off a great year. Uh, what are you seeing from the fans? The enthusiasm that was in the arena last season, do you think you can build off of that? Well, everybody loves to win, including myself. And so, you know, going into last year, there was not a lot to cheer about. You had to trust the fact that uh, I was going to build a roster that was going to be really good and compete. And we did that. I you know, give the coaches a lot of credit. You know, they put the roster together last year, and we had a really competitive year. We were back to playing, as I've always said, the first two or three years that we were here. Um, but it's exciting. You know, my, my process hasn't changed. You know, whether we won a lot of games or lose a lot of games, um, you know, I go back and figure out how we can get better and you know, think about the things that we did well, the things that we really need to work on, uh, get some players and compete hard, and that's what we've done in the offseason. And I'm really excited about you know practice. I, we'll, we'll go tomorrow at 8 a.m. Some coaches will make Saturday an hour or Sunday two hours where they've saved their days. But I kind of want to make it you know just like it's the original start of practice, like it used to be. Uh, obviously, there's no wrong. Um, you know, midnight madness leading up to it, but you know, when we get after it, I think we go at two or two thirty on Monday, and I want our guys to have that mindset that he has thirty opportunities that we get a chance to practice to be ready for our first games.